losing with Brad. All right. So uh, yesterday, uh, it was very sad uh, after the um, uh, missile launch by uh, Iran into a U.S. military base where nobody died. Yeah. The plane crashed about an hour later in Iran. It was a 737. I had said yesterday, plane 737s, unless it was that new 737 Max, right. don't just crash. And it, then the way it was described that it crashed is that the plane was on fire. Mm -hmm. And I had said yesterday, I'm no aviation expert, investigator, right. forensic, you know, I'm just plain old Uncle Brad. But I said yesterday, you know, Boeing 737s, the good old Boeing 737s, and this was a new one, made in 2016, they just don't mm -hmm. go up in flames. You know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, a plane may crash because of a malfunction, a uh, pilot loses control of the plane, but a plane just doesn't go up, go on fire. And I said, something's weird. I said yesterday, maybe it was like an anti-aircraft or a missile or a bombing or a mm -hmm. terrorist. Uh, 82 Iranians died in that plane crash. 63 Canadians died in that plane Sheesh. crash. 11 Ukrainians, 10 Swedes, four Afghans, three Britons, and three Germans. A total of 176 Sheesh. people died on that plane. It was in the air for about eight minutes climbing out of Tehran on its way to um, Ukraine, Kiev. And it is now, according to Pentagon officials, according to Canadian officials, and also according to Ukrainian officials, the reason that the 737 crashed and burned in the air was because it was hit by a surface-to-air anti-missile defense from Iran. Wow. So apparently, we don't know whether Iran did this on purpose. Mm -hmm. I would presume it was inadvertent. I don't think they would want to shoot down right. an unarmed commercial right. airplane. Uh, but what what apparently happened is, is that somebody got scared that the United States was going to retaliate Jeez. and had these surface-to-air anti-missile launchers ready. And apparently, the launcher mistook the, the airplane plane as, a, as missile? a missile coming Jeez. into Iran. It was shot off to defend the Iranian territory and blew the people up. So they blew the up plane. mid air. They, they blew up in mid air. Oh That's why I gosh. said planes just don't blow right. up in mid air like that. You That's did what say I said that. yesterday. Wow. So uh, the crash happened in less than an hour after Iran fired 22 ballistic missiles. Now, Iran does not have, obviously, have any diplomatic relations with the United States. They are refusing to hand over the black boxes to either the United States government or to Boeing, the manufacturer. Um, but uh, what, what people are saying is that it was an anti-aircraft missile. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau today at a press conference said that Canadian intelligence has information from multiple sources that indicate the plane was shot down from an Iranian surface-to-air missile. He filed, though, that he said it may have been an inadvertent. Uh, when asked if the United States deserves any blame for this tragedy, Trudeau responded by saying, it was too soon to be drawn conclusions and assigning blame or responsibility. Uh, Iran will not give the black box uh, to Boeing. We don't know what's going to happen with that black box, mm. whether Iran's gonna keep it and what ultimately is going to happen from it. What we do know is that 176 people got killed. Yeah. And uh, I would say, I would say that the responsibility uh, in this particular situation would rely, would 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 be on Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the ones who shot this surface-to-air yeah. missile, and more importantly, they did not have the foresight to close the airport down after they decided to launch these missiles into Iraq. Uh -huh. They allowed commercial airplanes during military uh, right. maneuvers, military missiles going off. Mm -hmm. They sh that airport should have been closed down. Yeah, so now, like now they didn't want to close the airport down in advance and give warning, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But once those missiles went up in the air, every plane should have been grounded. Yeah, and the fact that this plane was allowed Still, to take yeah. off 30, 45 minutes—I don't know, 50 minutes after Iran attacked the U.S. military base, and they did not close down that airport in Tehran, uh, I, I, I blame Iran. Yeah. That's my do you opinion. Think, do you think the passengers actually knew that the missiles had just been shot? How, since how it was they, so... They would have no idea unless maybe they had... Um, 
unless they had Wi-Fi on the plane. Right. But usually the Wi-Fi doesn't go in until after 10,000 feet. Right. And not everybody pays for the Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. So I would I would say that it's unlikely that That's anybody horrible. knew. And the plane, and, you know, the only thing you could say is that you hope, you know, nobody suffered and everybody right. died instantly. I have no idea. I don't know what it's like. But it's horrifying, whatever, Man. whatever it may be. But it's 176 innocent lives Sheesh. dead. In addition to the 50, 60, 70 Iranians that got killed in the funeral mm-hmm. for General Solomon, over 200 people dead um, as a result of the Already. killing of Solomon by the by Donald Trump and the United States of America. Um, Donald Trump in a in a press conference earlier today, because people are saying, "Well, why did you have to kill this guy? Mm-hmm. What what was the imminent threat?" Mm-hmm. Because we kept hearing imminent threat, imminent threat. I have no idea if this is true or not, but Donald Trump said the imminent threat was that this general from Iran, he was he was the one who was coordinating all of the protests and uh, assaults on the U.S. Embassy in the Green Zone in Iraq and Baghdad. If you remember last week, people were protesting. They were trying to climb the wall into the embassy, mm-hmm. go into the embassy and... and do damage or kill people inside the embassy Mm -hmm. and they had to be um, literally shot at by U.S. personnel on the other side similar to what happened in Tehran in 1979 when when um, when protesters took over the U.S. embassy in Tehran and held uh, 50 some odd Americans hostage for almost a year right so I guess Trump did not want on his watch he did not want on his watch I'm assuming um, this to happen again, right. especially a year into a year out of the election. Right. Um, now, in his press conference, he said that not only did this general from Iran, and I have no no way of knowing whether this is true or not. This is Donald Trump who lies all day long. Right. So we have no idea if this is true or not. Uh, but uh, he had said that this general Solomon, uh, he was not only leading these protests and organizing these protests of these protesters trying to breach the barriers to the U.S. Embassy, mm-hmm. uh, perhaps even take hostages, uh, but was also planning planning on a major bombing um. of the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, and that th- that this this killing of him stopped that bombing in its tracks, mm-hmm. and that was the imminent threat. Whether it's true or not, right. we'll know in 25 years when they when they declassify all this information. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when I'm about 80 years old, right, then you'll I, find I, out. And you're here, you'll be about 50. Oh my we'll God. be schmoozing. Joe, please keep. Joe, <laughs> please remember this day 25 years from now when they declassify this information. Oh my God. And we will, we will <laughs> go back and play the tape and yes. see if I'm right. <laughs> Okay, Jill says it's locked in her brain. 25 years from now, we'll see if I'm right. Um, so that's kind of what's uh, that's kind of what's been going on. Uh, now, the other thing is this. You know, we're not out of the woods yet with Iran. Mm-hmm. Uh, because even though the U.S. and Iran are not going to go head-to-head as country to country, Iran has like these you know, other players and other groups that act on behalf of right, Iran. Right. All different types of paramilitary groups with all different names. Mm-hmm. Many are terrorist groups, others are paramilitary groups. Some are, are Persian and Iranian, others are Syrian, some are, you know, all, all over the Houthis in, in, in Yemen. So, so, I, so no. I, I made the, the Iran, Iran, um, they fund the Houthis in the war in Yemen right now. Right. Right. So, um, so I don't know, and I don't know all the names of the different groups. I'm, mm-hmm. You know, as I said, I'm not an airplane expert. I'm certainly not a geopolitical expert of Iran and Iraq. Mm-hmm. But I do know that Iran definitely does fund many groups. And my belief, from my little knowledge, mm-hmm. is that these groups are going to cause a lot of mayhem for the U.S. military in Iraq. They are not going to leave. And it's going to be a low-level war now between these groups and the U.S. military. U.S. military is gearing up for that. They're not even fighting ISIS anymore. Yeah. They're, they're now said they stop it fighting ISIS and we're now going to have to fight these paramilitary groups that Iran is funding. So now it's become a low-level war uh, and hopefully it doesn't break out into a, 
high level war. Yeah. And again, it all goes back to why are we there? <laughs> Listen. Okay. I wish I knew. And and finally, the last thing about I- Iran and Iraq and all of this before we move on is that a poll came out. Uh, I saw this afternoon, mm-hmm. and more than 68% of Americans say that uh, that Donald Trump killing this general in Iran has made the world less safe than more safe. Yes. And that's where yes. we stand right now. Yeah. Meanwhile, Mitch McConnell, who is the leader of the Republican senators, who is, you know, bitching up a storm ready to finish this impeachment. He doesn't want it to drag into the presidential elections. Mm -hmm. Nancy Pelosi's holding on to those impeachment papers like I hold on to my cards here Mm -hmm. for dear life. (laughs) Won't hand them over to McConnell. Right. Because if she hands them over, McConnell will make this impeachment trial go away in 48 hours. (sighs) So Nancy Pelosi, she is trying to keep this impeachment alive for as long as possible to hurt Donald Trump in the election. Mm -hmm. And McConnell wants it over with. So Mitch McConnell needs... uh, needs uh, 51 senators, Republican senators, to agree on a very quick, short trial. Mm -hmm. He says he has those votes now, and uh, he believes that the impeachment trial will proceed next week with or without impeachment papers from Nancy Pelosi, Uh and we'll see how that all goes. I do not know. Meanwhile, for those of you who are watching on Facebook right now, Facebook has come out and said that they will not be policing political ads. Oh gosh, of course not. So every <laughs> every political ad that you see on Facebook, potentially or most likely, is a big effing lie. Right. Every ad you see on Facebook potentially could be a huge, huge lie because they are not, it, it's funny because Facebook um, for uh, things that are in, that have a nature of um, national importance. Mm-hmm. They make you, such as if I were to run an immigration ad on Facebook, because immigration has national importance, they, they, they review these ads to make sure that they do not have inflammatory words. Mm-hmm. But what they do not review is the veracity of those words. So for example, um, if I if I'm an anti-immigration advocate, and I was going to run an ad, kick the smelly immigrants out of America because they're smelling up the joint. Right. Facebook would not allow that. Okay. Because we use the word "smelling immigrants." Right. And we we described an immigrant negatively. Right. But if you were to just run a fact-based advertisement that says, did you know that immigrants uh, have caused 99% of the murders in America? So it doesn't have to be true? It, it doesn't have to be true. That, they will they will allow that ad. What? Yeah, but they will not allow you to say, did you know that the immigrants smell? Because your dad describing them negatively. So they are not, that's how it works. That's how it works. But if I throw a video on with Beyonce's song, you're ripping that right off my profile. That's right. You want to know why? You want to know why? Why? Because it all comes down to the Benjamins. Mm-hmm. Okay. They want they want to run as many advertisements as they can. Wow. Um, and so they don't care, and they don't want to be sued for copyright. Right. Which is why we can't run music. Right. On Facebook, but certainly, but certainly. Um, you have to be very, very careful. That's insane. Very careful about what what you see. Now, Twitter, mm-hmm. for their, for their, you know, Twitter. Everybody sits there on Twitter. I find Twitter quite um, uh, anxiety r- 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 riding because everybody sits there and argues with each other, but nobody changes anybody's mind. Right. So Twitter is the big argument of politics. No minds are being changed. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you're anti-Trump. You just agree with all the anti-Trump stuff. And right. if you are pro-Trump, you agree then with all the pro, yeah. and then you fight, but nobody's minds ever changes. Right. So I find it very... This is true. I find it very upsetting to be on Twitter because I'm like, why am I wasting my time right. arguing with people? Nobody's mind is being changed. Right. It's literally just uh, an avenue to get some steam off. <laughs> exactly. Or, or, or to get validation for your own yes, opinions. Yes, yes. Okay, because yeah. a lot of people go on and then they get validation for their own opinions. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but at least for Twitter, 
they are not going to be running political advertising. Well, good. At least yes. that's good. Yeah. Jeez. Now, um, now the social on. media giant <laughs> Facebook, they said they're going to add transparency uh, to what's called an ad library, a public archive that the company set up in 2018, which allows anyone to see all the ads political campaigns run on Facebook mm -hmm. and Instagram. Big deal. Right. How do we even know any of this is true? That's crazy Okay. Uh, in an internal memo obtained by the New York Times earlier this week, Facebook executive Andrew Boz Bosworth credited Facebook with Donald Trump's success in the 2016 election and said that Trump won because he ran the single best digital ad campaign I've ever seen from any advertiser. Hmm. And you know what? It may very well be true. Uh, and they don't want to give up that money. Because if they give up that money, their stock goes down. Right. And if their stock goes down, well, that's then Mark good. Zuckerberg is unhappy <laughs> right. because he's not as wealthy as he was yesterday. And he don't care about anything. He has but no care. About, he only cares about his power and his money. That, that's it. And by the way, if we're shut off right now, the next 30 <laughs> seconds, you understand, you understand why. why. <laughs> so you're, you're following this Megxit? Not Brexit, yes. Megxit. Yes. Megxit. Uh, Meghan uh, and Harry are leaving the royal family. Man, It oh is man. a huge, huge soap opera. This is. Uh, in a statement from Buckingham Palace, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, they're calling this the Megxit. They announced that they have decided to step back from the royal family. They're going to become, right, quote, regular folks, move to Canada, and get a job. I just want to All know. Right, I mean, are they, is, is that where they're moving that, to? They're going to gonna Canada? move to Canada and they're going to get jobs. They're going to really this get is jobs. Like, this is like, you remember when, um, you know, this, this is like a reality show. Remember yeah. when, um, I, I wouldn't put it past them that this ends up being a reality show. Oh my um, God, that would be horrible. Be, because, do you remember, I thought about this. Remember the that reality show with um, Paris Hilton? Oh yeah. And, uh, Ni what, Nicole, and, uh, and, uh, and Simple uh, Life and Nicole. Yeah, Nicole, uh, 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 Lionel Richie's Lionel Richie's daughter. Son, Lionel Richie's Richie. daughter. Right, I and, remember and that there was show. these just two rich kids that went and did like the, normal people normal people's stuff. lives, and they were a disaster. Yes, like this is what I see. Like you know, uh, Harry, yeah, yeah. Harry, and Megan moved to Canada and like try to work on a farm. Then they try to work in a convenience store, and you know, Megan's this big superstar, and That's you know, insane. Harry, he's never, you know, he's never. You know, done what a day's hard work in his life. Right. You know, he's Dan Aykroyd in Trading Places. You know? I, do, I and, mean, speaking about trading places, I just want to know: Do you all want to trade places? Because I'll give you my life if I can live under Queen Elizabeth. I'm okay with well, it. Well, you know what? The writing was on the wall when you saw a few months ago. Megan had that oh, interview. That interview. That interview where she said, "Poor me, poor me. You don't know the pressure and stress I'm Girl. under." And you saw what was going to happen. You know, she comes. She goes, she goes, Harry, you know, I didn't sign up for all this pressure, oh, and please. I love you, and we got to go do this. She's running the show. Listen, this I'm guy, not... This guy, Harry, his, his head is spinning right now. I'm going to tell okay? you right now. His head is spinning from this girl, right? I don't know what it was, but from the beginning, I did not get good vibes from this girl. Not going to lie. I don't know what it was. My mom, my aunt, they all loved her. They were like, oh, my God, but it was something about her. And then, didn't this actually happen, like, in the past? I think it was, what? this is the reason why Queen Elizabeth is queen, because I think it was her uncle that moved to America to marry an actress, an American actress. Your grace, so, um, somebody right. So, that, right. so because of that, his brother ended up becoming king, and, and his brother is Queen Elizabeth's uh, father, I, I believe. Right, right. Yeah, so, I mean, this is history repeating, you know, yeah. but... Well, you know, you know, in one a, hand, that's trifling. In though. one, in one <laughs> hand, in one hand, you know, um, you know what you're signing up for, Megan. Mm. Okay, I mean, yes, it is a great fantasy to say I am the Queen of England or the Princess of England. What a fantasy right. to have that type of wedding and uh, notoriety. Like, what? But you got to know what you're signing up for. You have to. And you to. can't. And you can't just say I didn't understand what I was signing up for. I'm, I'm out of here. Mm. Okay, because you know what, you know what, you know what um, uh, uh, th their father did. Hmm. Um, uh, what's the father who Charles was Charles mm -hmm. with Diana? Diana couldn't handle it either. Oh right, 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 right. Remember, if you remember, Diana couldn't handle it either. Yeah. Do so you know what Charles said? Hmm. I'm not leaving the royal okay, family. Listen. We're getting divorced. Right. Okay. 
I don't so, know. If he, MK Moxham said Harry's a yes man. He certainly is. He certainly is. Now, according to the tabloid The Sun, which seems to be the expert mm-hmm. in the royal shenanigans that's going around, uh, they focused on Meghan's role in the couple's decision, headlining their front page. Uh, that when the couple went public, the front page of the uh, Sun in England said, Megxit. The newspaper says the couple has broken protocol by deciding to step down from their roles without consulting with other royals. Apparently, Charles and brother William found out 10 minutes before the announcement. Oh, my God. Yes. Uh, and they were Charles they and even William. didn't tell the Queen? Yes. Jeez. Now, Charles and William are, quote, incandescent with rage. Incandescent means glowing, glowing red. Mm-hmm. And described the act as a declaration of war on the family. Wow. Was it worth it? I don't think now, so. You know, you know, Megan uh, has a history of alienating family. She doesn't talk to her father. Exactly. Okay, think about it, right? Her stepsister, she does not talk to. And now she does not talk to anybody in the royal family. I'm not going to lie. And I feel like a lot of the viewers there, y'all can, I can say this because this is me. (laughs) Um, Me being black, you know, I felt really good to have a black person in the royal house and, and or the came, palace. And she came in she, she came and just effed up the whole, everything up the whole up. thing up. It's like Queen Elizabeth then like, let you in that house. She said she loved you. She was like showing you right. past queens that had black in them and stuff you know what i mean like they opened up and i was like this was even though a lot of the people in 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 uh, the uk did not approve but it also was opening up to the idea of hey we do deserve to be royal as well right. you know in in the uk if we want to but you just messed all that up like you just what took us all the way back now now the brits are so upset about this decision that the announcement yesterday, London's Madame Tussauds Museum announced that it will remove the waxworks of both. They Harry. did already. They removed Harry and Meghan are no longer is in trifling. the are no longer in the uh, family photos there. Damn. You know when you go yeah. you to Madame Tussauds, yeah. you go and next to the wax and yeah. put your arm around Harry and take the picture. I wonder where they put it. <laughs> yeah. Now, now what what what? Uh, Cancer. This is this is this is a great statistic. Researchers reported the largest ever one-year decline in the United States cancer death rate. Hmm. A drop they credited to advances in lung tumor treatments. The overall Ooh. cancer death rate is falling about one and a half percent a year since 1991. It fell two and a half, two point two percent from 2016 to 2017, uh, according to the American Cancer Society. That's the largest drop ever seen in national cancer statistics since they've been keeping record of this in 1930. Uh, Rebecca Siegel, who is the lead author, said it's absolutely driven by lung cancer, which accounts for about a quarter of all cancer deaths. Take lung cancer out of the mix in 2017, the rate drop is one and a quarter percent. Now, most lung cancer cases are tied to smoking, and decades of declining smoking rates have led to falling rates of lung cancer. But this report comes on the heels of the new Trump signed, uh, new Trump law signed on December 20th, raising the minimum age to buy tobacco uh, from 18 to 21. And finally, Mm -hmm. well, it's not finally, but we have some, at least some fun stuff too here. Okay. Uh, The Consumer Electronics Show, I've never been, but it always looks fun to go, Mm -hmm. uh, is happening right now in Las Vegas. It's the largest tech industry event uh, in the world, 170,000 people go to the Consumer Electronics Show every year. 4,500 vendors are showing off the new best and greatest gadgets of the year. And it gives us basically uh, a window into all of the new inventions and what's coming down the turnpike of consumer electronics. Now, the conference is hosted by the Consumer Technology Association, and this week it was dominated by news of a robot that's going to bring your toilet paper to you. 
when the uh, toilet paper roll <laughs> runs out. Listen, that yes, is perfect. The Charmin toilet tissue <laughs> has unveiled a two-wheeled robot. This is the Charmin company designed to save its owner at the most crucial moment. You get down on the bathroom, yo yo, yes. and there's nothing worse than going to the bathroom and then turning around to see nothing where the, there. nothing there. Has that just, ever happened to you? Of course, it happens to ev- <laughs> and it's happened to everybody. All that's there is that cardboard roll. <laughs> that and I'm like, who oh. took the last tissue there? And who didn't replace it? That's right. So this is called the robot. And it's summoned by a smartphone. So, the robot? Yeah, so if you um, go to the toilet without your phone, you're out of luck. Oh, damn. You need your phone to summon the robot. Now, I don't know how the robot, if you live upstairs and the robot's downstairs, if you live in a two-story house, how or that's going to work out. Or does it open the actual door? I don't know. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually you close the door, right? Exactly. Right? And if you have a big keeps, bathroom. Nobody keeps the door open when they're on the toilet, <laughs> right? I mean, how many times people go, hey, man, close the door. Right. Never. <laughs> yeah, so the concept was unveiled by Charmin. I don't know how long this is, you know, how well this will work. Um, and they have two other concepts also called the Smell Sense and the VIP. Oh, God. What is now, that? Now, the first... P-E-E. You okay. get it? Yes. Now, the first is an electronic sensor mounted on a bathroom wall to monitor the air for whether it's stinky or not. It tells people whether the room is a go or a no-go based on the odor. So you stick this outside your bathroom. So, okay. yo, yo, you go to the bathroom and I'm your roommate. Okay, we stick this outside. <laughs> I have to now, I go look at this electronic sensor. I know when it's safe to go to the bathroom after you have left. Ooh. That's I not actually, a bad one. I actually that's like not a that. bad one, right? I actually like that because I hate bad smell. Yeah, that's not like, a bad oof. one. Um, now, um, I don't know what the, uh, what is the VIP? I don't know what the VIP is. Uh, I don't see it here, but... There's something also called the VIP, but I'm not sure what it is. All right. Meanwhile, if you're a fan of Star Trek, you're going to love the Med Wand, which is the closest gadget to a tricorder that I have ever seen. The small... Okay, what is a tricorder? <laughs> ah, ah, okay. So, all right. So, I was never a Star Trek fan. Neither okay, was I. <laughs> so, when, I, when I'm reading this, I've never seen a tricorder in my life. But apparently the tricorder was when, when, you know, like when one of the people on Star Trek was, you know, hurt mm-hmm. and they would go to the doctor. Is it Scotty was the doctor? Sure. Who was the doctor? Beam me up, Scotty. No, beam me. No, Scotty was the engineer. <laughs> so, right. Whoever they went, whoever the name of the doctor was, <laughs> they would go to the doctor. And instead of the doctor, like, doing surgery, the doctor would take a wand. Oh, yes. I do and, remember right, that. Right, right. They would take a wand and they go, meh, uh-huh. meh. And then all of a sudden, and all of a sudden, by the next commercial, the guy's perfect. Yes. All right. So now they have a new thing called the Med Wand. It's a small scanner. Uh, it puts ten medical diagnostic devices in the palm of your hand, so the doctor can examine you through a computer, no matter where you are in the world. Wow. That's that's actually pretty cool because if you're in a remote place and you don't yeah. have, uh, you know, but you got to have this gadget on you. That's if you fine. Go to a remote place. That's nice. Now you hold the device to your chest and it listens to your heart or lungs. You pass it back and forth across the forehead without even touching your skin. It takes your temperature. Can wow. measure blood, oxygen levels, scan your skin, or peer at your tonsils when you open and say, ah. I don't know how useful that's going to be because how many people are going to be in remote places be able to get their doctor? If you're in such a remote place, is there an internet connection? Oh, damn. You, so you need to have internet connection. How are you going to get it to the doctor? You're absolutely right, Brad. <laughs> yes. And by the way, we just got word that the name of the doctor on Dr. Star Trek... Spock. No, it's not Dr. Spock. That's what everybody's saying. No, John it, was, and... it was Dr. McCoy. Dr. Spock was it's a the doctor. one with the ears. Yeah, but he was not the medical doctor. Dr. McCoy was the medical doctor. Dr. Uh, Spock was a, a doctor of law, baby. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Or my type of doctor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so he was a doctor like you're a doctor. Yeah, you know, oh, okay. Right, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that guy right that there. Guy. That guy was McCoy. He was the doctor. All right. All right. So, that's what's going on there. And uh, what else? Finally. Finally, let's keep it with the Star Trek theme. Uh, a British astronaut who was the first British female in space came out recently and said that absolutely 
Aliens exist. There's no two ways about it. Oh, my goodness. This was Britain's first female astronaut into space. She is coming out and saying they exist. So why is that? Why is she saying she this? She says this. Let's see. if I don't know if she says this because she met an alien. Right. Or it's just her opinion. Okay. She says there are so many billions of stars out there in the universe that there must be all sorts of different forms of life. Will they be like you and me made up of carbon and nitrogen? Maybe not. It's possible they're here right now and we just don't see them. It's like one of those men in black things, hmm. right? Yeah. Now, Sherman is not the only person to speculate about aliens living among us. A NASA scientist by the name of Silvano Colombano. Silvano Colombano, who works for the Space Agency's Intelligence Systems Division, uh, conceded that aliens might have already visited Earth, but we have to challenge our assumptions if we want to find them. So apparently, what most people involved in space now say that they're here, we just don't see them, or we just have to, we just assume they're gonna be like green men with you know legs right. and arms, but maybe an alien could be a particle or something that's alive, like a, I don't know. Do you think that we have aliens here? Uh, yes, I've met a few. <laughs> I, I have met a few aliens oh, in my Lord. life because I, I have said, I have said, this person could not possibly come from Earth. <laughs> All right, I, I have talked to a few people and I'm like, this person ain't coming from this earth. I don't know where he came from, but it's not from this earth. Uh, don't put that on the alien. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.